to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Most of the main teachings have taught about the good will of God, the acceptable, the perfect will of God, and so on and so forth. And those things are there, but I, I do not think that those are, I believe, this is my opinion, and I, I believe it's consistent from scripture, that there are only two dimensions to the will of God. Number one, I call it the revealed will of God. Number two, I call it the permissible will of God. That's all there is. And let me, let me define it very quickly. I hope you are not confused in this lecture. Remember, we are still on point two. Are we together? The second dimension of prayer. But now it has necessitated doing a quick course on understanding the will of God. The revealed will of God. Write this down, please. The revealed will of God is the will of God as revealed primarily from Scripture. Full stop. The will of God as, as known to man primarily from scripture there is a reason why i say that please follow carefully god will give us intelligence now that the revealed will of god represents the dimension of god's will that has been made known to man primarily from scripture notice i didn't say only from scripture but primarily from scripture there are other auxiliary support systems of obtaining the revealed will of God one is prophecy one is visions one dreams are we together but the degree of error and inaccuracy in all these other methods is the reason why they all submit to scripture I have taught this that the prophecy of scripture is the highest the noblest and most accurate of all prophecies word of knowledge prophecy like the dispensing of that gift or that office and all other spiritual media for obtaining the will of god they work but they have a very high degree of error and the errors are caused by many things there is the error of perception there is the error of reception there is the error of interpretation are we together now there is the error that comes as a result of the low level of renewal in the interpreter. All of these things together are a mix and they corrupt the purity of the voice of God through all those channels. You are safest when you understand and discern the will of God as revealed from scripture. I believe strongly that scripture was written so that it will not be changed. If scripture was only recorded in a radio, it would have been changed by now. Scripture was written. It is written. You hardly change what is written. Are we together? That means when I want to explore the will of God for his program, for my life, my first area of such is not a dream. Look up, please. My first area of search is not Apostle Joshua Selman to prophesy to you. My first area of search is scripture and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to do what? To make you wise unto salvation. It is very important. Let me give you an example. Oh boy. An example of the revealed will of God. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Everyone please read. Ready? One, two, read. Who will have all men to be saved 
and to come to the knowledge of the truth it is god's desire this is a revealed will of god there is no need asking oh god do you want my father to be saved oh god do you want my mother to be saved your prayer is lord give me the strategy for the salvation not whether he will be saved or not asking god whether someone should be saved is not correct because scripture has already opened his will number two asking whether it is god's desire for the saints to do well is not a will that is hidden are we together now yes jeremiah 29 11 for i know the thoughts that i think towards you say yet the lord thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you an expected end there is the will of god as revealed from scripture this is very important as we prepare to go to the third dimension because you see until you know what the will of god is you will not be able to make certain requests There are things we do as a ministry. There are privileges we give to workers. There are privileges we give to leaders. Are we together now? It is, it is something that has been put on ground. The workers, the leaders know. And based on that knowledge, it's not a mystery. If, they are, if the workers are not sure, they can go to their heads of department and their executives who help to interpret what has been put down by the ministry as far as their welfare and their provision is concerned are we together now yes for instance in this ministry whatever program we are doing as workers or whatever the moment it is night it is mandatory that under normal circumstances vehicles are around to help alleviate the stress of moving in darkness it's not something that is a special arrangement it is so after this service now there are buses that will be waiting to pick people are we together now now asking apostle do you think that there will be a bus after this service it's unnecessary because that will has been revealed are you getting what i'm saying now the scripture already has the most accurate dimension of god's will his will as revealed in scripture and then demonstrated in Christ. Now listen carefully. The Bible calls Jesus the image of the invisible God. And I've taught you here that Jesus came as a correction of the perceptions we had about God. There were many things we did not know about God. There were many things we knew but not properly about God. So we look at the life of Jesus in his earth work. And we learn God by looking at Jesus. There's no need asking whether God is a God of love. We see it in Jesus. We see how he treated sinners and publicans. We see how he treated children. We see how he wept at people's funerals. So we know that God is love because Jesus is, was, and continues to be love. Are we together now? God is a giver. How do I know that? Five loaves, four loaves. Little children, have you any catch? Cast your net to the right side. His life was full of giving till he gave his life. So I know God is a giver. So when the Bible says he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him, I trust God because I see that truth of scripture revealed in Jesus. I know that God is slow to anger and judgment. Why? Because Jesus was walking with some disciples and they saw some other people and said, can we command fire to fall? And Jesus said, do you not know what spirit you are of? The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Jesus became a demonstration of that. So nobody will come and talk nonsense and tell you, ah, God will kill you tomorrow, throw away all that garbage. Jesus, greater than any prophet, is a representation of the fact that God is slow to anger. Let God be true and every man a liar. Are we together now? It is the reason why we edit prophecies based on scripture and based on Jesus the Christ. Looking up to Jesus. He can be looked up to. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. That means our journey is with reference to the standard he gave us. 
There is nowhere in all the 33 and a half years of Jesus that I see him intentionally plotting evil against any. So God does not think evil because as seen in the Christ, it was not there. It is true that he judges, but God is slow to anger. So away with that theology that makes it look like God is chasing every man just to destroy you. It's not supposed to be a license for licentiousness. Don't get me wrong. But that it is consoling to know that we are wrapped up in the love of the Father. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed. When Jesus saw people who were, who, who were crying in funerals, he joined them to weep. We do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity you know why i teach you this because the days that are coming are coming with too much spirituality and spiritism if you are not grounded on scripture many things will confuse you you will soon not know who god is again because there are pseudo actions that look spiritual but they are not consistent with the christ look up to jesus not apostle joshua selman look up to jesus not a preacher paul only said follow me as i follow christ before you follow me see who i'm following are we together let me tell you this the revelation of god's love in my life has done something to me when i say god loves me i really mean it it's not because of the results he loves me I have an understanding with God not only see my father this is not about covenant of ministry and this, God loves me I hear the chains falling that's what is happening tonight chains from all kinds of teachings well-meaning but destructive the will of God is that all men be saved and all men come into the knowledge of him. It is the reason why in this ministry, for instance, we do not fight our wounded soldiers. We stand for them. If people do things and go down, we are quick to come. You see me preach and it looks like I'm always holding a cane. Yes, I'm holding a cane, but remember thy rod and thy staff. I told you they don't do the same thing. Rod is for correction staff is to draw you you need both if you are a preacher and you have only staff you will see the kind of members you produce if you have only a rod you also see the kind of members you produce to totally comfort people you need the rod and the staff hallelujah i love people if you are not growing in love you do not know god and the love of christ is not at work in you it doesn't matter what village you come from we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation are we together we have been grafted into that life of love by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you heal the sick not when you preach love i hear the chains falling let fear live your life I hear the chains falling. You cannot serve God in fear. You serve God in reverence. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. One of the most beautiful times in Koinonia here is when we are done with the service and I have to hug my children. You see all of them come over me. That thing gives me a feeling that I cannot begin to describe. No matter how you look at me and no matter what you are holding, I turn to my children and give them a big hug. They come with their, their wet shirt from fighting over Jews and so I still hug them like that. I love them. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed. The love of God is a very powerful revelation. Many people have exaggerated it and their lives continue to be shredded into nonsense. They allow the devil to just come and people have exaggerated the love of the Father to the point that they have covered the issue of hellfire. Hell is still there. Listen to my message last week. Hell is there. Hell is real. Lake of fire is even worse than hell. 
Many people talk about hell and leave lake of fire. Hell is a spirit. Hell itself will be relocated to the lake of fire. Those who are in hell now have not officially started their judgment. The judgment will officially start when death, hell, the grave will be relocated into the lake of fire. We don't know who is there, but one thing we know is that there are spirits who are there bound in everlasting chains. What I just told you is also love. Use this as a father and see how correct your children will be. When I was in secondary school, before they flog you, they would tell you what you did wrong. You will accept that I did wrong. They will pray for you, then they will flog you. Let's start Koinonia secondary schools. You will see how we we'll train these children. I'm not going to bring this secular, demonic, Babylonian training imagine that you flog your child and he knows what he did wrong just because you prayed for him does not mean you should not whip him foolishness is bound in the the heart of a child the rod of correction not prayer will drive it far from him there is a psychological testimony that your child needs I'm only serving what the chef prepared this night <laughs> remember I told you that I'm only a waiter the principal chef is the Holy Spirit and his meals are always balanced and nourishing say amen. amen so there is the revealed will of God number two there is the permissible will of God let me talk about that very quickly what is the permissible will of God now look up please I will say it then i'll repeat it as you write the permissible will of god represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness god's character and that directly exalt the christ the permissible will of god represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness comma god's character comma and directly exalt christ now just because it is permissible does not mean it is necessarily not the will of god permissible there does not mean god is managing it look up please there are things in scripture that are not written verbatim there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you will be in zaria now there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you have five children now please look up there are dimensions of god's will that are not stated directly from scripture at that point we use the tools of righteousness we use the tools of god's character and we use the tools of the exaltation of christ as the compass to help us to be able to walk around that will. these three first then in addition prophecies visions and the rest come notice the bible says the kingdom of god is in talk to me righteousness peace and joy never in visions never in prophecy no the kingdom of god is in righteousness that means god's methodology peace joy in the holy ghost now let me tell you this this is the major area where as believers we have suffered a great deal again and again this dimension of understanding the permissible will of God Sam has a program in two weeks return to worship now whether or not you had a vision or a dream or God just put it in your heart the truth is that that program if it is done in righteousness are we together if it is done consistent with christ's character and if it will end up glorifying christ it is the will of god that will support the kingdom as powerful as the will revealed in scripture are you getting me now this is where all the other auxiliary things like finding who to marry a job to do there is nowhere in scripture where it is written 
that Pastor Alpha marry Annie. But within the boundary of righteousness, if you marry an unbeliever, it was not the will of God. Are we together now? But that within the boundary of the will of God, you can find a sister that loves God and her life is consistent. What is virtue? Virtue is a reflection of the, your closeness to the character of Christ. So I don't need to see a demonic sister or a devilish brother and ask, is that God's will? No. In Koinonia here, for instance, if you come and meet me and you tell me this girl that you use for example, you like her, for instance, it can be within the boundary of the will of God. If you are a well-behaved brother and you are responsible, are we together? It's my responsibility to vet you based on the will of God. Righteousness, responsibility, love. And I can tell you with all the blessings of God and God will stamp it and endorse it. Are we together? There are very few people on earth who because of their lives, listen carefully, and because of the nature of what they do for the kingdom, God will meticulously place restrictions around everything in their life because the role that they play, someone like me now, you see, almost everything about my life is meticulously guided. Do you know why? The reason is because I carry a burden of a generation and the implication of everything I do is generational but that is not that cannot be a template for you it is the price i have to pay for carrying this anointing there is a maximum number of cars god has told me i may never have it if at all it comes and it's more than that you see god has searched my life and he has he has optimized the things that must be in my life for me to be effective that functioning at your optimal level will require this there are people who functioning at their optimal level will require that they are millionaires not billionaires some it will even require that they are not millionaires at all but it cannot be a template for everybody scripture come this brother now can be trusting god for a job Lord, should I go to Enugu or should I go to Lagos? It is not written here directly. The only thing is that the path of the justice has a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. So these are foundations. I can take out time. If this brother is given a job right now, he needs to look at that job. Does this job compromise on my work with God? Are we together? Will this help me to be responsible? If it does, then within that, this gentleman can safely go on that job. Now, if for any reason, that decision he has taken is against destiny, God will go out of his way. God does not only lead by saying start, he leads by saying stop. There are times you don't wait for him to say start, you move. If he keeps quiet, he's endorsing you. If he says stop, you return. I, I'm, I'm showing you certain things about the will of God. Oh God, should I build a house? God is a God of portions. It's never his will for me to be a tenant for life. So if some money comes, wisdom that is profitable. <laughs> wisdom that is profitable to direct should tell me buy land and start building. If it is not the will of God, God will show me. Are we together? Our precious men here have married good and lovely sisters. Not all of them saw visions. Some of them just directly in the name of honesty. They saw a sister who loved God. They came to me and I said, God bless you. You may be waiting forever. For a dream a vision some occult type encounter now 
Listen, I'm, I'm telling, I'm using this as a point of contact. Listen, my brother, let me tell you. I'm saying it, it's not a, you can sit down and trust God. Look at a godly sister. God already gave you what virtue is. Virtue is not just the ability to cook. Virtue is your closeness to the character of Christ. Find a godly sister that looks like that. When a Job 29 man marries a Proverbs 31 woman, they will give birth to a Psalm 112 home. Are we together? There are people today who God already answered them and gave them good jobs. But not understanding the concept of the will of God. They are waiting for a vision. NMPC gave you a job, you rejected it because God called you into ministry. I'm not saying it's wrong. Good, good things came to you and you threw it away and God said, I've tried for you. And you are there now wallowing around and being punished for not discerning the will of God. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to see, to hear, and to discern the will of God. You are with a, a man who is smoking and drinking and ungodly and you said I would change him. You are not in the will of God. Let me just tell you straight up this night. The ministry of transformation is exclusively the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Any man that does not change before marrying you will seldom change. He will remain that way. And any man who changes just because he wants to marry you has not changed. Whatever a man does to only you, he's not really, is not a virtue in him. If he's kind to only you, he's not kind. If he's truly kind, he will be kind to everybody. Kindness will so implicate him. Even if he tries to lie, to come out. A lady who washes only your plates is not neat. The virtue of thoroughness and excellence must spill out in every area. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains When God brings a destiny helper that is blessed, you don't fight him because you have been taught that all blessings come from God through men to men. And if the men don't have what you are looking for, you will not have it. So it does not make you to look down on others, but you pay attention. When Joseph of Arimathea is coming, you pay attention. When Pharaoh is coming, oh Joseph, pay attention. When Boaz is coming, Ruth, pay attention. When Ahasuerus is calling for women, Esther, pay attention. It's how God lifts men. God lifts men by bringing those greater than you to lift you. It's a technology. It's not hidden. How does God increase a ministry? By anointing them and putting the word so that they minister to people. And the people that are built by that word will communicate benevolence. The offering you gave is not going to heaven. The offering you gave is what will pay boss tomorrow. By sounds. So it's not a mystery. The more I continue to be anointed and I bless you and dispense spiritual value. The more this ministry will continue to increase and I will also increase. There's no gimmick about it. So if you are poor and your pews are empty, the problem is the value, not just demons. The knowledge of God's will will help us to stop talking a lot of nonsense. Bishop Oyedeko says every man's calling is a high calling. Nobody has a low calling. Everybody's calling is a high calling. So if you are failing in your life, take responsibility. Don't say, God made me to be small. Sit down and say, why is my life not moving forward? This cannot be the will of God for me. To keep begging every day as a man, moving from pillar to post. I am a prayer warrior, but in addition, I should be blessed to be a blessing. Genesis 12 verse 2, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. Are we together? If you get married, four months, five months, your wife refuses to get pregnant. Don't sit down asking nonsense and say whether that is God's will. Be fruitful. Genesis 1, 26. Be 
fruitful is his written will. The priest that blessed you on behalf of God prophesied to you. Immediately you should know something is wrong. Listen. Obey scripture. If you are wrong, let God take responsibility. Are we together? A job that makes you compromise on your spiritual life. A job that takes down your prayer life. A job that cuts you away from the community of believers that can build you. You don't need a vision. Get out of that job immediately. I don't care how much you are being paid. What shall it profit a man? He's talking profit. If he gains the whole world and loses his soul, I repeat, get out of that job. Get out of that job. Don't sit down asking, should I go? Pack your load and leave. Are we together? Yes. You are in a church, for instance, that is full of manipulation and full of all kinds of things. And you see that the character of what is done is not in accordance to scripture. There is no integrity. There is no godliness. There is no feeding of the word of God. There is the responsibility of a shepherd as designed by scripture. Any man who is not doing it is not a shepherd, period. I will give you pastors after my heart. You sit down and you, every week, everything from you is going. You pack your load and get out of that place. There is no need praying and say, Lord, should I stay there? No. Are we together? The will of God. So when I'm praying, back to what we're teaching, when I'm praying, my awareness of the will of God. So he's praying, Father, Apostle, use this lady for example. And I just found out that I like her. What is wrong with it? I'm not saying, I'm not saying she's your, 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 your wife. But if God joins two of you, we're happy. We join you. What, what, that, that's, I mean... Listen, God never told Ruth, Boaz is her husband. Boaz, hunger, took Ruth and Naomi. They knew they were about to die. She went to a field to clean her thing. Boaz saw her, a benevolent man. No strings attached. All marital processes start with a purified motif. That is an expression of who you truly are. He said i don't know who this young girl is but leave something for her let her be able to take it back to her mother and god said that's right remember god is looking for those who create the lineage that jesus will be part of so he would not handle anything with laxity because jesus is about to come through that tribe are we together if you come and meet me as a brother and say apostle God is showing me a particular lady. I'll say, let me stand representing what the parents will tell you. Straight up. I'm not even going to waste your time. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Congratulations. Are you a responsible gentleman? Yes. Prove it. There are two kinds of responsibility. There's psychological responsibility where you are getting the mindset that will help you to be serious. Two, there is structural responsibility where now you are beginning to produce fruit. Even if you don't have structural responsibility and you have a mindset that wins based on the word of God, we can stand to say, no, the way you are going, what is in your mind will eventually come. Are you seeing that? But you are not responsible. You are not under authority. You are a careless person. You live your life. Your relationship is like occult. Nobody is going to give you any daughter. At least not, not any of my ladies here. And you ladies, we have created a template to help you. If you like, don't follow a path that God has created for your redemption. And, and follow cunningly devised fables until it lands you in trouble. See, the, the, the house of God is supposed to be a place of guidance. I don't need to go to the Bible to find out whether it's the will of God for me to go back home this night. As soon as service is done and I'm done, I go back home. Why? Going back home subscribes to the law of responsibility. 
that every good man should have a home and should go back home and sleep at home are we together even the madman tried to stay in a place is the demons that made him restless he tried so men who don't stay at home they are not responsible it's a revelation i hear the chains falling hey, I Let's tie up this thing so the permissible will of god please look up please the permissible will of god actions that are within the boundary of righteousness if you have to cheat your brother to increase you cannot say it's the will of god you cannot call that favor if you have to bring people down to rise that is not favor if you have to kill to rise that is not favor if you have to bring 250,000 before you get a job, hello, that is not favor. Let me tell you the truth. No, sir, it is not favor. Knowing what the will of God is. So the first dimension of prayer is fellowship and growth. The second dimension is obtaining promises and making requests all of these that we have been discussing are still under that thank you thank you so much the revealed will of god the permissible will of god the third dimension of prayer that we we'll discuss very quickly our time is gone is the dimension that makes for decrees and spiritual legislation decrees and spiritual legislation i've taught you three dimensions of prayer number one the dimension for fellowship and growth number two obtaining promises obtaining promises and i told you that to obtain promises you must number one have a heart that is selfless number two you must ensure that your request is within the boundary of the will of God then you can ask confidently this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in his name he heareth us are we together and then number three the dimension of decrease and spiritual legislation now please pay attention this is a dimension of prayer that does not so much deal with talking to God this is a dimension of prayer that deals with rearranging realities based on the Word of God please understand this is the dimension of prayer that is concerned with not only talking to God, but talking to things, talking to circumstances, talking to time, talking to demons, talking to elements of creation to line up with the will of God. That's why I took out time to talk to you about the will of God. Because if you do not know the will of God and the provisions of scripture, decree and spiritual legislation will not be possible with you. What then do we say to these things? I know what God has made for me. I know what God says should be in my life. This is also the realm of prayer where words, listen now, become like arrows in a man's quiver. Words are instruments of creation. The following scripture ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 please write down these scriptures these are the scriptures that we must have in our minds when we want to engage prayer as a system for making decrees and legislating spiritual realities 
Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4. The A part says, where the word of a king is, talk to me, there is power. Where the word of a king is. And then Revelation chapter 5 verse 10, just write it, don't give us media, just write it down. The Bible says we have been made unto our God, kings and priests, or a kingdom of priests, and we shall reign, not in heaven, in the earth. So I know under God that in Christ, my words are not ordinary. My words are powerful. Please listen everybody overflow. One, two, three online. Listen carefully. This part of this teaching concerns you seriously. Number two, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. I'm giving you a few scriptures that guide you when making decrees and establishing realities in the spirit. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Death and life, help us media, we have to rush, are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are not in the nozzle of a gun. Death and life are not in the stone of a catapult. Death and life are not in the edge of the sword. The Bible says they are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, shall eat the fruit thereof i use words to program life i use words to program death i can program life over territories i can program death over territories number three job chapter 22 and 28 popular scripture write it down please job 22 28 thou shall also decree everybody say decree to decree means to pass as law. Thou shall decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody, unto the one that decreed it. Thou shall decree a thing. Thou shall decree life. Thou shall decree increase. Thou shall decree victory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God has already brought them as the redeemed. Let them say so. Are we together? The word of a king. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established and the light shall shine upon your ways. Number three. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Read it please. Ready? One, two, read. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mightest be. In other words, bail yourself out of that situation. Bail yourself. Declare yourself acquitted. Come out of that situation by making decrees in prayer. Zakoska baratoshiata. This family, nobody rises. In the name of Jesus, I decree, I declare that the horns that keep men down, I am exempted. The Bible says you are, you are already breaking the chains. You are, you are exempting yourself. Listen, let me tell you. If you do not declare to be justified, then whatever you see, you take it like that. Scripture. Declare thou. Declare what? Declare thou health, declare thou long life, declare thou prosperity, declare thou increase. This is not just some name it, claim it thing. It's, a, it's an ordinance of the kingdom. It is how we function in this kingdom. God is called in Genesis 1, 2, 3, the talking spirit. The spirit that moves by talking. Listen, please do not ever get to a point in your life where making decrees with understanding looks like a basic spiritual thing you are silent your destiny is silent you are silent every door remains closed declare thou that thou mightest be justified i declare over my life sometimes i stand in front of the mirror and i speak joshua selma you will never go down you go up and up and up the light of god is upon you 
the favor of God is upon you it's not every time that I pray that I'm praying for you there are times I'm praying for myself too there are times I'm praying for my own destiny even when I pray for you I pray with intelligence I know what the Word of God says father this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness I declare your people are prospering they are understanding their minds are enlarged listen it's not every time you talk to God no there are times that you stand like Ezekiel and speak to the bones. Can these bones live? Only thou knowest. And he says, prophesy. Prophesy. He spoke to the bones and there was a sound. And it came. And all the bones came together but there was no life. And he says, son of man, he says prophesy to the four winds and say thou wind breathe upon the slain and the breath entered them and they became an exceeding great army isaiah 41 21 the lord showed me this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life one two please read produce your cause saith the lord bring forth your strong reasons saith the king of jacob this is like a law court and you are bringing the basis for why such and such and such should happen to you why should i lift your family why should i promote you bring forth your strong reasons see let me tell you this many people are prayerful but they are wordless is why the prayer is not effective we pray in tongues important we pray to god and we ask prayers but most of our prayers are outside of the jurisdiction and the methodologies of the word it is important see this is the missing link this is where the disciples missed it they were praying amiss you can be prayerful and not get results because you are praying amiss fortified by the word the first dimension of jesus's growth as revealed in scripture is getting the word first then we see him praying we did not have the opportunity to hear what he was saying in his 40 days prayer but at least we heard what he said in gethsemane so we know that his prayer was consistent with scripture if it be thy will produce your strong reasons listen believers your prayer life is going to be rich in this end time to the degree to which you understand these dimensions as i approach the throne of grace to pray i know that my prayer life is not all about petitions there is a dimension of it that is tailored for fellowship let me tell you this many times the determinant of what dimension you switch to is often the Holy Ghost there are times you go with your heart heavy but there are times that he chooses what dimension to be expressed in prayer there are times you go to prayer wanting to decree and bind and cast and God wants koinonia fellowship are we together don't resist it I'm saying this because many prayer warriors have missed it here there are times you go to God and he does he just wants you to be still in his presence and you are just praying in tongues and his power is just upon you and you feel that you are not praying because you are not dissipating energy to be heard by another person whereas there is communion the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the koinonia the fellowship the sharing the participation and under those kinds of most times when god switches to that dimension what is happening to you is impartation most impartations happen through that time of fellowship it is not the binding and casting in that stillness you are about to go for a ministration and you are praying and you are just soaking and for hours all you are doing is lying down there like a dead man thirty minutes one hour and that anointing is on you waves and waves and waves of the glory you stand up from that encounter 
and go for your ministration and you will see the demonstration of the power and the spirit you will see great grace you will operate in the fullness of the grace that god allocated you ask those who know me when you see me praying and preparing for koinonia especially for miracle service you can be in the living room and you will not hear me sometimes when i'm alone just like that i can be walking around for a long time just walking around next thing i carry a paper i'm writing god is speaking to me i'm walking sometimes god is opening my eyes and i'm seeing the things that he's going to be doing i'm writing and god is revealing things see let me tell you something i'm not saying it's in the bible but it's something that has helped my prayer life try praying in the night minimize light many times when you pray in the night you need darkness to see light it's a mystery that only prayerful people understand help that person running out here I have prayed most effective in an atmosphere where my eyes can see very few things you hear God the distractions are minimal you are not looking and checking and then seeing your phone beep and say ah maybe it's the alert that has come these things are distracting God is speaking destiny things to you you need your attention I love praying in the night off the lights you may just have red lights here flashing green light it's enough for your eyes to see use your your phone that's why you know some of us who just gave our lives to christ now thank god for you but you see we had a privilege of praying well because many times we prayed outside and we prayed in the night when god gives you money and you build a good house build a beautiful garden so not for visitors for meeting with God go back to the Garden of Eden a beautiful place and you are praying you are praying fellowship son you have done well it's time to move to the next level do it this way do it this way change this change that yes Lord you are praying sometimes it is god that introduces your petitions not you okay you were talking to me about the issue of finance for the ministry um let me tell you what you will do i am going to inspire you and a book is going to come the name of the book is maybe whatever it is and as you write this book my hand will come upon it and it will go to the ends of the earth yes lord you have received the blueprint you will write a book that does not make sense and it will bring results that don't make sense because you discuss with God in the secret place look at how God came to Abraham study God's study Abraham's prayer life it was full of fellowship And then there are times that you carry a burden and you go to God sincerely Lord we need to talk there are things we need to talk about see let me tell you this do not be afraid to come to God with your needs do not feel less spiritual the truth is that God wants your joy to be full bring the school fees issue bring the your brother issue bring the salvation issue bring it before him lord why am i still going back to my village in my dreams i thought i was free come before him he's your father this attack that i thought left me this thing that i thought i'd breaking i'd broken free from one year two years ago why is it coming back to my life you can come to god in prayer lord why is it that when i'm blessed i'm only blessed for three weeks one week i go back to look like my past something is wrong you can pray you can go to the God who answers prayers and then there are times my brothers and my sisters where you obtain grace from God but you need to stand can I tell you this most of the victory of a believer listen carefully 
will come through dimension one and dimension three when you do one and three effectively you will have little of petitions to bring spare me two three minutes we'll wrap up with rules of engagement I will show you some of the do's and don'ts in prayers decrees are powerful Shalabaru katasiata my day i speak to you i command my morning i command my afternoon i command my evening hear the word of the lord line up according to god's word the bible says this is the day that the lord has made it's not the devil that made it if god made my day let it look good because anything god makes it is good this is how you pray everything god made it is good i remove accidents from my day I remove trouble from my day. I decree and declare. It is well with me. I decree and declare. Favor comes to me. You get into your shop. You don't sit down and start calling and say, I'm now here. No. You lock your door. I decree and declare. Even if it's in two minutes. I declare that favor comes today. By the power of the Holy Spirit. My products are a delight to many. They are coming by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Recently, God introduced a very great friend to my life. Wonderful man. Extremely wealthy man. Very, very extremely wealthy. Um, I'll not mention the name. But then we're having a meeting with the man and then he spoke to me and he said, Apostle, let me tell you, before my workers start, seven, he's a billionaire, seven a.m., in the morning we all pray we have fasting sessions and we pray we declare to god that we have no wisdom on our own i say are you not blessed now away with that nonsense that when you pray your business you you involve god um, you are not being social go to dubai go to the gulf nations and see how these people take their idols and take it. they teach it as part of the ways to succeed they teach you to do your yoga they teach you to do your transcendental meditation they believe that if not for anything it relaxes the mind only believers who are ashamed and afraid of god i'm not saying to go and be praying during office hours that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying that you need to involve god in your life unashamedly listen if you are here and you are in business I'm teaching you this as God grants you grace. Even if your business partner is an unbeliever, you may not just shout and pray, but even if it's under your breath, Lord, this is the day. I bless the bread I'm making. I bless my shop. I bless this. I decree and declare. And you will see how your day will look like. Lord, every troublemaker is far from all that I do. For the Bible declares that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous hallelujah praise the lord recently i had i had the story of a, a gentleman this is true a gentleman who was just sitting down and he got an alert of over eight zeros and two days later a prominent institution in this country just called him and they said they are going to come and carry you to the court we are associating you to a fraud case and he said what is all this did you receive so 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 alert yes sir remain silent until you come there true story alert came to my destiny do you know what the account the money was to be transferred to i don't know how that happened it eventually found its way to his account most evil you think that is breakthrough that guy is in trouble because of that thing he may not get visas to travel again. It is not breakthrough. You want to transfer money, corrupt money, quickly to somebody's account. Then it's my own account. No, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. When I had that thing, I prayed for myself because people bless me all the time. I prayed for myself. Lord, let nobody carry stolen money in this country so that they will now put on newspaper exposed apostle joshua selman 
is involved with somebody's money shout no way listen i'm telling you that if you do not decree and you live your life barren you can receive 100 million in your church one year later you are in prison everything that is evil and would destroy you may god keep it far from your life but it will not just happen just by talking listen you are the priest of your destiny you are the prophet of your destiny i will continue speaking over your life but you must learn to speak speak as believers we approach life from the standpoint of victory remember that our decree is to establish hallelujah let me just give you two rules of engagement i've said it but our time is up number one rules of engagement prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of god and the victory of christ jesus rules of engagement in the prayer ministry number one prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of god and the victory of christ jesus prayer must be approached from two standpoints number one the love of god the awareness of the love of god the fatherhood of god that once i am within the will of god god is not withholding anything to. so it gives me the confidence to approach him and then number two the victory please this is important listen to me believers whether it is warfare or spiritual decrees and legislature you are already a vic a victim if you do not realize that you are standing upon the victory and the liberty of christ that is the basis from which we approach prayer we do not approach prayer to win we approach prayer to establish realities that have already been wrought in the christ the bible says in ephesians 1 and when you read from verse 3 that god has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places listen to me so whether we pray and say i command that cause to leave you are not necessarily listen to me you are taking advantage of the victory that christ has wrought and you are now superimposing it upon the rebellion of darkness rules of engagement david already won before he met goliath but he still fought david already won before his covenant already killed goliath but he stood before goliath to establish it that's why he said goliath i'm i'm here to bring down your head give it to the bird he's finished hallelujah from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but your sins was not atoned for by casting it out jesus came and died his dying was not negating what he did in prophecy his dying was giving it expression so i believe in warfare i believe in casting out demons but my approach is from the standpoint of victory are we together now please take it down let me sing one song we're preparing to to wrap up um what's that darling jackson every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome one more time every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome listen to me listen koinonia you must approach life like one who has won you must approach life like life owes you because you are victorious now thanks be to god who always causes us he's already doing thanksgiving thanks be to god i never approach life to win i approach life to establish victory i never cast out devils 
um, as, as, as the basis of victory. I cast them out because the Bible tells me I already have authority. This is very important. It looks like it's a little issue, but it's a big deal in the realm of the spirit. Listen, you are already blessed. That's why you prosper. You prosper to give evidence to the blessing. Prosperity is manifesting the blessing on you. You are blessed with wisdom. You are blessed with relationships. You are blessed with favor. You are blessed with divine direction. These are true riches. When you engage them and they produce prosperity, it is not when money comes to you that you are blessed. Money comes as a receipt that it is true you are blessed. Are we together? The awareness. You own the universe. You own yeah, everyone on earth. You own that's my father. The universe. Listen. Do you know why I approach prayer this way? I don't approach prayer hoping that God will answer me. No. I don't approach. If it is not the will of God, I don't even pray it. If I'm confused, I inquire in prayer. And the spirit of revelation will come and open up scripture and bring the voice of God. I only pray when I'm sure of the will of God. If I am not sure, I pray to know the will of God. Then knowing the will of God, I pray to establish it. Listen, when you know this, your prayer becomes rich. Because every time I catch you praying, you should be doing one or more all of the following. Fellowship. Or obtaining promises in the spirit or establishing reality whether you are interceding for souls whether you are speaking over territories it comes under spiritual legislation that way you are walking in dominion this is what prayer was designed for we are doing many things today that prayer was not designed for it is the reason why we do not get results your prayer life cannot go down when you see the necessity of prayer, you know that without prayer, my fellowship will be bankrupt. Without prayer, I cannot obtain promises. And without prayer, I cannot create a climate of the word of God in my life. When do we pray? All the time. Anytime. Anytime is right for prayer. Anytime is right for prayer. You can be buffing. And making decrees my day is blessed in the name of Jesus any time may not be conducive for the study of the word because you need the Bible you need materials you need time but any time is conducive for prayer I may excuse you for not reading your Bible today but I will not excuse you for praying you will need time to settle down and really read and meditate but you don't need any time including when you turn to the other side on your bed you can train your spirit man listen if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost here with evidence of speaking in tongues it doesn't matter what you believe or don't believe about it there is a dimension of the priesthood of the saints that you may never come into please hear what I tell you this is not some debate it is truth from scripture that there is a dimension of prayer tonight we are going to borrow five minutes from our time and we are going to pray we are going to obtain promises and we are going to make decrees is someone ready to change things in your life please rise up on your feet Listen, the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. 
if my little children here come and ask me and say daddy i want sweet i will buy them sweet for two reasons one i love them and two i am able now unto him the him loves you and the him is able to do the two conditions for making sure your needs reach you have been solved as far as god's side is concerned he loves you and he is able please listen to me god loves you and god is able god loves me and god is able therefore there's no restraint from him giving me the anointing there's no restraint to lifting me god loves me and he is able god loves me and he's able if i do not obtain then it means my heart is selfish dogged in rebellion and i am praying outside of his will can you open your mouth and in the next two minutes just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit what things soever ye desire when you pray when you pray when you pray koinonia you are praying to the god of the universe the mighty god please pray koinonia The universe, you are everyone on earth. You are the universe, you are the universe. Pray. The universe. hallelujah hallelujah obtained promises obtained promises obtained promises what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou received it and thou shall have it listen in the next two minutes i'd like you to receive things in the spirit the things that the bible said please don't take casual this opportunity we're operating under an anointing i'd like you to declare receive by faith in the name of jesus receive mantles receive anointings receive open doors receive favors receive ble blessings receive graces in the name of jesus receive ease
ask that you may receive that your joy may be fulfilled Shouts of joy There are shouts of joy Joy Shouts of joy In my life There are shouts of joy Haruda shalabarada balakata Shout of joy He pratoshe la baba baba Pray Karitoshe le prakarutia Obtain promises Obtain breakthroughs Obtain open doors By faith In prayer Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're wrapping up. Now, please, I'd like you to take this remaining two minutes seriously. You are going to make decrees. You are not talking to God. You are talking to your destiny. You are talking to your life. Are you ready to pray? Open your mouth and make decrees. Lift up your heads. Oh, ye gates. Lift up your heads. I command closed doors. Be open. In the name of Jesus. I hold the keys of David. And I command the doors open. That no man will shut. I decree and declare my path is as a shining light it shines brighter it shines brighter unto the perfect day I decree and declare I shall not die I live I choose life I choose life I reject death not by accident not by the soul God is a with favor like a shield. God is a with favor like a shield. In the name of Jesus, I go from glory to glory. I go from power to power. I go from grace to grace. From anointing to anointing. From wisdom to wisdom. Koinonia is like a shining light that grows brighter and brighter unto the perfect day the Lord gives the word from this place and great be the company of them that publish it bless your children bless your wife bless your husband bless your home bless your finances bless your spiritual life We declare over Zaria, we declare over Kaduna, we declare over Nigeria in the name of Jesus, rising from glory to glory. Everything I do prospers in the name of Jesus. No failure in my life. No failure with me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. Please listen to me. Your prayer life must come back alive. I'm telling you this. You are here in this place and you know your prayer life is down. You are doing yourself a disservice 
you are doing your destiny a disservice if you are a man here and you don't pray you will be a bad priest in your home in destiny he spake a parable that men ought always to pray there is nobody under this grace who should not be a man of prayer where did you get that one from now i've given you a revelation that sponsors your prayer life listen you have an assignment to find conducive places for prayer find it god will help you pray make decrees speak over things you buy a new phone don't just plug it and start using it in the name of jesus i declare that within the time this phone is with me it will serve me i will not answer evil i will not listen to evil reports learn to pray you buy a new car don't just enter and drive yourself to your grave i decree and declare the hand of the lord is upon this you pay for a new house or you buy a new house in the name of jesus this is the habitation of the lord you enter a new shop i speak peace a new semester as a student or a new session i declare i give this session a name i call it ease i call it excellence i call it recovery pray as a couple pray with your children pray as business people pray as a man of god pray all the time pray these dimensions of prayer and watch your life continue to rise death will come and look for you it will turn back failure will come and look for you it will turn back everything that does not have the signature of the christ will come and look for you and go back your life only becomes an unending epistle of wonders see let me tell you this i stopped being afraid of my success when i found out it was god and me that were controlling it if you do not know that it's you and god in partnership controlling your results you will fear it these blessings that has come today will it ever stay ah, will it ever stay Yeshua how dare you ask me whether my tomorrow will be better than my today of course of course no man's opinion is involved god alone and i agree with him that tomorrow will always dwarf today it's a covenant of growth that koinonia's tomorrow will always god will give us peace by all means Yeshua, See, listen honestly and may god forgive me if this sounds like pride but you see i love people i admire people i respect and honor people but i submit to you in the name of the lord i have never ever desired in my life to replace myself with someone else when i found out god's love for me it's a blessing to be me it's a privilege to be me i'm honored to be myself it's a revelation god has invested his love in my life and protects it jealously like a hen watching her young even the egg that has not hatched she still watches it with the same jealousy please let prayer change you most people prayer is not changing them because it's not derived from knowledge if i pray for you rejoice i really blessed you because when i pray he hears me it's not a song it's an experience he does not hear me as a man of god he hears me as his son he hears me as his bride he hears me as his servant he must hear one if he does not hear me as his son he will hear me as his fellowship in the place of intercourse as his bride if he does not hear me as his bride he will hear me by reason of my office so if i tell you i pray for you believe that i really prayed for you
I have a privilege as his son. I have a privilege as his bride. And I have a privilege as his servant. I have been indoctrinated about the responsibility of God over my life. I'm proposing this to you so that it becomes your mindset today. I never consider myself to be a second class person, not anywhere in the earth. And it's not by this vocal, I'm not mm, a settled conviction. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. When God spoke to us and told us the nations will acknowledge what he is doing, I believed him. Many did not believe. But today we see what the hand of the Lord continues to do through our lives and through this ministry. I've shared with you that God spoke to me that I will lose the loins of kings for your sake. He said, kings will entreat your favor. I believed him. Yes, I believed him. Do you know a day will come, it will be a privilege for men to know you. It's not, it's not from a sarcastic standpoint. Please find a way of believing what I'm telling you. I know your past is not allowing you to believe this. I know your present is not me, ugly me, me, uneducated me. Do you know what it means for a man to receive the investment of the Spirit upon him? Yeshua. next time anybody looks at you and makes it look as if you're a failure don't fight him just pray for him the next time someone looks at you you put your hand in your pocket and you come out with an empty pocket it's not enough reason to look down on yourself run away from people who demean you and look down on you they are sincere people but they are not good people this is what he has chosen to make us epistles of wonder there is nothing anybody can do about it. See, let me tell you. This is just a step out of the cave. Keep watching. You will watch episodes in your lifetime of what God can do with men. He will make us specimens. It doesn't matter what message. It doesn't matter what proof. It's nonsense. When you find a key, a door will always open. It's not pride. It's the truth. A day will come, we will stand. And as those flags float, and you watch the nations crown for an opportunity to touch you, and says, you belong to this family. Can I have the privilege? You will stand and say, my God. There are bodies terrestrial, and there are bodies celestial. Even among the stars, one different from another in glory. My father owns the world. It's not some childish talk. Oh, mm -mm. I believe it. It is true. Nobody, nobody, nobody has the power to intimidate you. God will cause you to triumph and get see don't belittle yourself if god wants to use you tell him yes i'm usable if god wants to lift you say yes god says i will prosper you don't sit down and say god i'm too small god you mean me i will be a man of god a woman of god's husband a man of god's wife me i will be a bit don't let no devil talk you down we come from cultures that always like to show we are not important based on vain parameters never call cost what god has not called cost peter kill and eat and he said no 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 he said do not call unclean they may call your tribe unclean they may call your results unclean but when god sits upon it it will produce something that will mentor nations a day will come we will mentor kings a day will come we will make the word of god alive again like the days of seth and adam knew his wife and she bore seth and men began again to call upon the name of the lord all hands together let's run
One more time. Father, please use koinonia as a specimen to show the nations what you can do with men who are yielded. Lord, use koinonia. Let it please you, O God of all flesh, to use the men and women in this ministry and connected to this spiritual family as a specimen lift people out of nothing oh god and may they become trophies that flaunt your glory around the earth place something upon our lives oh god that will cause us to mentor kings and speak your purposes to nations place something upon our destinies oh god that will cause kings to lose their loins for us. Grant us the grace for cities, the grace for territories, the grace for nations, that we will speak your word and reveal your glory even to kings. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, cause us to be your workmanship, that is recreated in Christ Jesus even unto good works let our priesthood be seen all across the earth let that kingly dimension be seen all over the earth cause our words to be like the word of God let us speak oh God and by our speech let us shift things in the spirit in the name of Jesus I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Life to your prayer life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare life to your prayer life. I shift you to a new level of fellowship. In the name of Jesus. Let there be mighty fire upon your life. I decree and declare that you will begin to command strange results in prayer change things in prayer rewrite things in prayer keep darkness at bay through prayer command miracles signs and wonders through prayer open gates for greater glory through prayer in the name of jesus christ i pray for you like solomon prayed over jerusalem that every time you pray may the covenant of this ministry back your prayer in the name of jesus christ the integrity that god has vested upon us and upon this work let it also speak while you pray in the mighty name of jesus christ i speak to you tonight command results command strange results results that will dumbfound principalities in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus listen make it a point of duty to pray every day as much as possible pray every day i will advise that at least once at least the laziest person in koinonia should be able to fast at least once every month the laziest person 
the one who is not serious with his destiny should at least be able to fast once every month fasting should not be strange to you not as a ritual but as a way of opening the gates of faith to rise then shall your light break forth and your health will come speedily as the morning pray often pray as a couple pray get teachings on prayer get worship songs please let your prayer fire go higher and higher koinonia hear me by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salman and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye